Welcome back to the Library of Humanity. Today we're talking about why sitting alone in your room is probably the best thing that you can do to improve yourself and not just like materially, like, oh, I'm going to have a better job. I'm going to be, um, have, be more popular. No, I'm talking about self-actualization, self-realization, wisdom, and truth. Because here in, on the channel of Library of Humanity, we're looking at how to be your greatest self. And even seeing how my greatest self is connected to the entire universe. And even what is beyond the universe, which I call existence itself, or being. Okay, so there's a quote by this philosopher named Blaise Pascal. So Blaise Pascal has a very famous quote. It says, quote, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Okay, so here we're talking about why doing nothing is underrated and why you need, you need to do more do nothing. Okay, so what does do nothing even look like? Like this, sitting quietly alone in your room, no music. Uh, no distractions in general. Music is a pretty big distraction. No reading, because when you are focused on reading, you focus too much on like intellect, being intellectual and being smart. That's kind of one of your big, uh, my big drives in life, but also people who follow this channel, one of their main drives or even part of their identity is to be a smart person. Okay, Being a smart person according to how our society defines smart or intelligent, is overrated. It's not going to make you feel any happier. Okay, so like if you're giving a lecture or a speech um, and you think and you have this self-esteem like, oh, I'm pretty smart. Everyone else think I'm pretty, thinks I'm pretty smart. That is, that's not going to make you very, very happy for very long. It might give you a sense of happiness for that day or the next day but I'm talking about eternal happiness okay and that one of the main keys or avenues to eternal happiness is your ability to do nothing sitting alone in your room quietly so if you can't do that if you cannot sit alone in your room quietly you will never be happy let me repeat that if you can't sit alone in your room quietly for an extended period of time like a whole day or two days, three days, you will never be happy. So if, if you're at home alone, uh, maybe you have a long weekend, you should dedicate the entire weekend to doing nothing. Literally sit on your couch. You might cook some food. You might go for a walk, but that is it. There's no videos that you're watching to distract yourself. And you're going to notice that the main thing that is distracting you are your thoughts, your emotions, and your desires. <laughs> your thoughts, your emotions, and your desires for little petty things like um, listening to music or eating like delicious food like ice cream or uh, steak or something like that where you have this strong desire to consume something that you normally consume or even like something special like, oh, you know, I, I deserve some ice cream or like, you know how if you go for a jog and you exercise, you feel like you deserve a little break by eating some ice cream. But that's not what we're talking about when you're dedicating an entire long weekend to doing nothing. Okay. And I have some videos on my channel, such as how to take a real vacation. Or um, those are videos that can teach you some tips on how to do nothing. Okay. And the, the main thing is, is to eat healthy and don't eat too much um, so that your mind stays focused. No caffeine, no porn or masturbation, no, like I said, no books, no videos, just no stimuli, okay? So it's just you and your awareness. It's just you and you. <laughs> so the small you and the big you, that is all that's existing when you're, when you're doing nothing. And now it's going to feel feel comfortable right away but after an hour or so you're going to feel quite uncomfortable because like I said it's going to be your desire to go do something because 
our society teaches us that doing is more important than anything else. But I'm saying that doing is very, very overrated. And not just that, it's actually unhealthy if you do do doing too much. So do less more frequently. <laughs> so do less more. Um, and do more less. So that doesn't really make much sense, but it really does if you understand how good you feel after a full day of doing nothing. And then you have to schedule this, not just in your schedule, but also your entire life. Okay, and I'm going to be talking about this more and more um, as I prepare my future for having a lifestyle of doing nothing. Having a minimalist lifestyle. It's actually deep minimalism. So I have a video on here called Deep Minimalism. And in Deep Minimalism, you it's basically you, 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 set, you have a schedule and you maybe once a month or once a week, you literally do nothing. You like contemplate all day or you meditate all day. You do yoga, you go for a walk um, or you just sit on the couch. Just sit on the couch with you and your thoughts. So you need to be doing this more often. And in order to do that, you need to order your life. You need to plan the future of your life where you're doing nothing a lot. Okay, so for example, for me, I don't plan on getting married anytime soon. So that's number one. Do not get in a long-term relationship yet because you're not ready for it. So once you're able to contemplate and have mindfulness and some self-realizations, then you might seek a partner who also is, uh, I guess, interested or has a passion for um, self-realization. Uh, however, you're not ready for that yet, since we are just beginners and in intermediate level here of self-realization, self-actualization. What we're looking at in this channel is the first couple steps to prepare your life to, so you're, you don't get married, you have a career in which you're not too busy, but also you're excited. So you need to have a job where you're excited to go every day, but it's not too busy or stressful so that... Um, like you, ideally you would work probably five or six hours a day, um, and only four or five days a week. Um, you would you would want weekends completely dedicated to mindfulness and well being, um, and then during the week you are helping society move forward, um, and you're very empathetic towards people by helping them. So it's really about helping people during the week, and then on the weekend. You're diving into your true self. Um, even though during the week you might be a little bit in your small self uh, every once in a while because your ego is attached to your career. Um, and that's going to be another key is how can I have less ego in my career? And that's why you got to, instead of, like in my previous video, try to avoid being a professional as much as you can. Try to be yourself as much as possible. So when you're finding a career where it's a little bit more relaxed and you're actually helping other people rather than just following society's rules all of the time, you, you, you're being too stressed in, and being influenced by society to be, to be a professional. But you need to try to avoid and block off those, uh, those influences from society about professionalism and be your true self. Um, and once you find a job or a career where you're allowed to, to dive into yourself as much as possible, do a lot of do nothing. So you're doing nothing a lot. Um, and that's how I'm trying to plan my life forward. So right now I'm still only 27 years old. Um, I don't have enough like money or free time to be doing what I want to do completely. I want to, for me personally, I want to be a, a school teacher where I'm helping kids during the week. But then on the weekends and the summertime, I'm dedicating that to self-actualization by doing nothing, um, maybe doing traveling like camping, um, re reading really deep books, uh, making podcasts, listening to podcasts, and making good material on here on YouTube for you guys to listen to. So that's how I'm planning my life. If that's, if that's the case, there's no really room for long-term relationships in the moment. Uh, for me... Uh, I need to even move to another state to, or to to have this setting where it's a lot of 
not me time, but it's a lot of do nothing time. Because when you're around your family or close friends all the time, then it's very distracting from you diving deep into yourself. Um, I think that's about it. The last thing I'll say is that doing nothing is difficult right away, but once you get more and more comfortable with it, there's nothing more you want to do besides doing nothing. And that the doing becomes weird, but also you're able to do with a mindfulness state. So that's the goal is by doing nothing a lot, when you are doing something, you're doing it mindfully. Okay. And living a life of mindfulness eventually before you die will lead to self-actualization, self-realization, God realization, universe realization. Okay. So that's it on this video. If you like it, you can click the like button. Uh, if you have questions, comment below. I'll see you guys in about a week. I'm really busy right now, but I'll try to put out a video uh, once a week. Peace.